One of the main features we knew we wanted to include was the ability to create anamorphic style lens flares. So if we take a look at the preset here, I'm going to move it around. And you can see I have these bright elements that only move horizontally. But if I move the lens flare up and down, they stay with the light. So this is a pretty simple idea, but not being able to do that with normal lens flares is a bit limiting. So if we take a look at a standard lens flare, you can see all of the elements stay in a perfect straight line along a single vector. And that's from the light source through the center of the frame. So elements can be further from the light source, but it will always be in a straight line. Well, real lens flares don't really follow that rule. In fact, even non-anamorphic lens flares commonly have elements that just sporadically show up in strange places. So if we just take a look at a couple examples here, this one was somewhat inspired by uh, this image. And you can see that this is an anamorphic style flare. It is a preset that is available. Taking a look at this one, you have these uh, different spots and these elements. Again, if we look at the Sun Digital, if we move this around, you can see that these blue elements only exist horizontally. And again, we have sort of a Michael Bay style lens flare where you have these objects that just move around the frame in, in a little bit less than linear way. So they're not necessarily all horizontal, but they can have some different variation. But these position controls aren't only for creating anamorphic lens flares, but putting elements into the frame where you want them. Now if we look at this example, we have the real sun on the right, and we have the optical flare preset on the left. And the only way to be able to create this would be to offset the elements from the light position. And with optical flares, you can simply move elements up and over and anywhere that you want them. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would set this up because what's a feature unless it's really easy to use. So we'll go into the options and we already have a preset that's uh, ready to go. So let's just clear it, start from scratch and then we'll click on lens objects and we'll add a glow, a multi iris. And what I want to do is go to the multi iris. We're going to come down to the object shape and change the polygon size from six to four. So that basically makes a square. Now I'm also going to turn down the roundness to zero. And the roundness just gives it a little bit of a round, more organic look. So we actually want that to be zero. We'll come up here to the top. I'm going to stretch my elements down. So we'll just stretch this so that it's kind of these smaller elements. Maybe scale them down also. Now, right now it's set to translate freely. So that means X and Y. And that would be okay, but we want to create an anamorphic element. So we go onto the translation here and we just set it to horizontal. And automatically that element will only translate in the horizontal fashion. Now what about adding another lens element? So we'll come over here, we'll click on iris, and uh, let's go ahead and make it anamorphic. Maybe we could do 2.4, nice and wide, and we can even cheat it and just kind of squeeze it down. We'll change the color of it to blue. And uh, that looks good. Now I want this element to move around, but I want to move around mostly horizontally. So if I change it to horizontal, it will always be horizontal. But what if we go down to custom? So custom starts out with 100% and 100%. So that means free translation, 100% in X and 100% in Y. So if we lower this value, we'll get something closer to horizontal, but not completely. So now we can move it and that element will stay somewhat horizontally, but also translate a little bit less. Now another common requirement is to offset an element from the light source. So we'll go back to this multi iris, this horizontal multi iris, and let's scale it down a bit. And uh, maybe even squeeze it in, brighten it up. So these are the common settings for controlling most of the settings. We'll also lower the number of objects to about 10. So that's pretty cool, it's kind of like a digital kind of anamorphic flare. Basically, I want to offset the position from the light source. So we'll come over here to the offset 
and we'll go ahead and maybe bring it down a bit. We'll duplicate the object and we'll move it up. So we'll set this to negative two. So now we've got two copies and I always like to variate the uh, second copy so it doesn't look exactly the same. Maybe add uh, a couple more objects or something. And uh, there we've got some anamorphic elements. We could uh, come over here, add a streak, and maybe a multi-iris that does translate so that we have uh, somewhat of a complete flare. We'll turn on the show background. And, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it uh, looks pretty good for a uh, video demo. Here's a couple of different examples of anamorphic style presets available with optical flares. There's also this one here that has a, a lot of different stuff going on. We have this digital looking lens flare that has a lot of different artifacts and even some dynamic triggering. We have the preset from the first demo of optical flares which has a lot of uh, cool artifacts and uh, coloring. And also some more motion graphic style flares that have some uh, anamorphic elements.